for two decades, the free summer concert series at Santa Rosa's Juilliard Park has been billed as Live at Juilliard, a clever homage to the famous School of Performing Arts in New York City. obligated to found the Juilliard School, grew up in this park when it was the Juilliard's family estate just south of the Iron Bridge that served as a gateway to the farming town of Santa Rosa, California. Unspoken is the relationship between the little nine-acre park in California and the famous school. The French-born Charles Juilliard mined on the Trinity River with his other brother Charles during the California Gold Rush. He settled in Santa Rosa in 1872. His son Frederick grew up here on this estate but went to New York City to join his wealthy uncle Augustus in business. At his uncle's death in 1919, Frederick became the sole heir to the Juilliard fortune, or so he thought. The will turned out to be ironclad. The old Institute for Musical Arts, a former insane asylum, became the Juilliard School of Music. In 1884, Charles Juilliard became aware of his new neighbor across Main Street. Luther Burbank announced his arrival by hauling 1,800 wagon loads of manure to the 12 building lots he bought from the Reverend Francis Dimmick. The moldy humor about the neighborhood going to seed was less offensive when spoken in French. Burbank's mother, Olive, was almost 40 years older than he. His second wife, Elizabeth Waters, was 40 years younger. Among those three people existed more than 150 years of American memory. Burbank built a 14-room house in 1906 as an anchor for his riverfront subdivision, right across the creek from the city's legal bordello district. Burbank's greatest achievement, of course, was riding with the Potato Queen in the 1924 Stockton, California Potato Festival. Having a tater tate with the Tater Queen in a Hubmobile speaks to the dreams of all men.
By 1931, Frederick and his sister, Florence, were the only surviving Juilliards. He donated the disused orchard estate to the city of Santa Rosa. Turning the Juilliard land into a park fell to the landscape architect Howard Gilkey. The Cleveland Cascade in Oakland, 1923, was his signature project. In 1929, Gilkey came to Sebastopol to pitch the idea of a waterfront park along the Laguna de Santa Rosa. But the drain, the swamp faction prevailed. We believe Juilliard Park was completed about 1940. Note the lack of trees back then. The architect's hand is evident at Juilliard Park and at Fremont Park, site of a Civil War era public school. These parks projects were part of a massive Depression-era public works effort. Gilkey was then employed with the WPA. Gilkey's trademark was water and stone of ancient Rome. Juilliard Park has a mystery. The memorial or tomb of Judge Richard Crawford dated 1919, long before the park existed. He, being dead, yet speaketh his testimony to how hard it is to quiet a lawyer. Ace detective work revealed the memorial is associated with the Church of One Tree, which was moved here in the late 1950s. Crawford actually died in 1917, and he safely rests in the Odd Fellow Cemetery in Santa Rosa. The tree canopy of Juilliard Park is so extensive, the park looks older than it is. The imported trees date no earlier than 1950. The street trees, cedar and oak, remain from the Juilliard Estate era. For a time, in late century, Juilliard Park served as a sort of unofficial arboretum. For the sycamore, oak, horse chestnut, magnolia, coast redwood, ginkgo biloba, western juniper, and the mysterious Umbella californicus. In the 1970s and 1980s, Juilliard Park shared something else with New York City, urban decay. The territory south of the Iron Bridge was the original outskirts of Santa Rosa. Then it became the underskirts. In 1984, Juilliard Park was voted best place to get mud. The area still retains a roadside motel ambiance, but also exhibits an old shoe charm. Except for a certain wildlife filmmaker, the park is quite safe. The stone grandfathers are Korean effigies who protect the village from evil. They keep a wary vigil on City Hall, which is built atop the confluence of Santa Rosa and Slaughter Creeks. Good job, grandfathers.